At first glance, the surface of the earth appears calm. Mountains stand firm, seas remain loyal to their shores, and deserts stretch out in silent stillness. But this silence is deceptive, because deep within, the earth is quietly yet relentlessly changing. And at the very heart of this transformation, somewhere in eastern Africa, the land is quite literally splitting in two, right before our eyes. So what's causing this rupture? Why is the earth suddenly tearing itself apart? The Afar region in eastern Africa may look like an ordinary desert, but beneath it lies an immense force rising from deep within the earth. Hot magma pushing upwards stretches, stresses, and cracks the crust from the inside. This is no ordinary place, it sits at the junction of three tectonic plates, the African, Somali, and Arabian plates. That means this is one of the most exposed regions on Earth, where deep structural tensions surface most clearly. Observations in recent years, along with data from satellites, reveal that the movements in this region are far from ordinary seismic activity. Scientists believe that the eastern part of the African continent is slowly drifting away from the west. And this process could eventually go so far that what is land today may one day become ocean floor. At first glance, this might seem like a distant possibility. But an event in 2005 made it clear just how real this process actually is. In September 2005, unusual activity originating from deep within the earth began in the Afar region of northeastern Ethiopia. Starting on September 4th, small to moderate earthquakes were recorded in the area. But this seismic activity soon escalated beyond the ordinary. In just one week, more than 130 earthquakes occurred. Such an intense sequence in such a short time pointed to something far more significant than a typical tectonic process. Scientists began closely monitoring the situation. The density of the seismic waves, their depth, and their regional distribution all indicated that a major transformation had begun underground. And the anticipated moment arrived on September 26, Mount Dabahu erupted. However, this eruption wasn't a typical volcanic explosion. The magma didn't flow out as lava. Instead, it advanced toward weak points in the crust and pushed upward vertically, creating a long fracture at the surface. In geology, this type of formation is called a dike. The resulting dike structure stretched about 37 miles in length. In some places, the cracks widened up to 26 feet. The most prominent part of the fracture measured 1,640 feet long and several feet deep. Deformation on this scale typically takes millions of years through normal tectonic movement, but here, it happened within just a few days. The crust underwent a geologic process and fast forward. During this event, about 0.6 cubic miles of magma reached the surface. Satellite data showed that the two sides of the fracture moved apart by an average of 26 feet. Considering that tectonic plates usually move only a few fractions of an inch per year, this was an extraordinary speed. Of course, these incidents didn't remain just a scientific event. The local population was directly affected. Around 6,300 people were evacuated from their homes. Gases released by the eruption, especially sulfur dioxide, made breathing difficult due to their density. Eyewitnesses reported that hundreds of goats, camels, and donkeys fell into the cracks and died. By sheer luck, only one person was injured. But for communities that relied on livestock for their livelihood, these losses meant a major economic and psychological disaster. The Dabahu event also marked a significant milestone in the history of geology. It was the first time such a clearly observable plate separation occurred on land, in the open air, and in a way that could be documented using modern technology. Normally, these processes happen on the ocean floor, beneath sea level. But this time, they unfolded in the middle of a desert, offering scientists a unique opportunity. The next question is this, is Africa really splitting in two? And if so, what kind of geographical consequences will this separation bring? The African continent has, in fact, been splitting apart from within for a long time. This separation is part of a geological movement powerful enough to divide the eastern side of the continent from the west. The Earth's outer shell is made up of large, rigid plates, these plates move due to temperature differences within the planet's interior. Africa is part of this dynamic system. The main plate that forms the continent is called the Nubian Plate. But along East Africa, a separate plate known as the Somali Plate is slowly pulling away from the eastern edge of the Nubian Plate. The Somali Plate represents the eastern portion of the continent and is drifting away from the landmass to its west. This separation process is most clearly observed in the Afar region, at a very specific point. 
In geology, this structure is known as a triple junction, a location where three different tectonic plates meet. The Afar triple junction is where the African, Somali, and Arabian plates converge. In other words, this is one of the most fragile and geologically active points on the continent. As these three plates move away from one another, tension builds and the crust weakens. As a result, this region experiences frequent earthquakes and is highly active volcanically. Scientists track these movements not only in theory, but also through direct measurements. With satellite-based radar measurement techniques, they can precisely detect how far the plates move apart each year. For example, the Somali plate is separating from the Nubian plate at an average rate of 0.08 to 0.24 inches per year. Meanwhile, the Arabian plate is moving away from the African continent at a rate of about one inch per year. At first glance, these numbers may seem small, but the direct outcome of this process is that East Africa will eventually break away from the rest of the continent. According to scientific models, this separation will be complete within approximately 5 to 10 million years. When that happens, the eastern parts of countries like Ethiopia, Somalia, Djibouti, Kenya, Tanzania, and Mozambique will become an isolated landmass. In essence, Africa will be split into two separate continents. The newly formed land will be surrounded by the Indian Ocean, creating a structure similar to an independent continent. This rifting process resembles the one that led to the formation of the Atlantic Ocean. In the same way, the South American continent once broke away from Africa. That's why geologists refer to the Afar region as a continental oceanic ridge. Typically, such plate separations are observed only on the ocean floor. But here, they can be clearly seen on the surface of solid land. The movement of tectonic plates doesn't just create cracks on the surface, it also thins the Earth's crust. This thinning causes the region to gradually sink. In the Afar region, some areas have already begun to drop below sea level. This shows that plate movements have not only horizontal, but also vertical consequences. As the ground subsides, these areas approach sea level and will eventually meet the ocean. Scientists point out that it's inevitable for waters from the Red Sea and the Indian Ocean to flow into these sinking zones. Once this merging is complete, the eastern edge of East Africa will be completely submerged and the continent will be split in two. However, the transformation of a region into an ocean doesn't happen overnight. It involves a series of stages that progress slowly and are often invisible to the naked eye. First, tensions in the crust form rift valleys and tectonic grabbins. These depressed areas gradually deepen over time. Then salty lakes begin to form in these regions. While lake levels may vary seasonally, these bodies of water are actually early indicators of the areas that will one day be covered by the sea. Places like the Danakil Depression in Ethiopia reveal the early stages of this transformation. This region, which lies below sea level, experiences extremely hot and arid conditions for most of the year. But it's only a few hundred miles from the sea and is physically sinking all the time. According to scientists, Danakil may turn into an inland sea within a few million years, eventually forming a strait connected to the ocean. The first signs of ocean formation usually appear when seawater begins to seep into underground cracks. Water from the Red Sea or the Indian Ocean slowly advances inland through fractures in the crust. These leaks give rise to small lagoons and saline water pools. Over time, these small inlets expand, merge, and evolve into larger bodies of water. In other words, the subsidence, fractures, and salty lakes we observe today are the ancestors of a future ocean. The new landmass that will emerge, carried by the Somali Plate, will be located within the Indian Ocean like an independent island. And this land is quite remarkable in size. Just by looking at the area of Tanzania, it's estimated that this region could fit about nine Icelands, seven United Kingdoms, or two Californias. This means the forming landmass wouldn't be just an island, but a potential candidate for a new continent. The new ocean that will emerge alongside the movement of tectonic plates will not only split the continent physically, it will also reshape the climate, ecosystems, water cycles, and marine life. Many of the inland regions that are currently arid may begin to receive rainfall as they move closer to new sources of oceanic moisture. Just like the explosion of biodiversity that occurred when Pangaea broke apart, new species and ecological structures could arise around this new ocean as well. These are long-term changes, but the cracks we see today in Eastern Africa are the starting points of that future. Yet amidst all these scientific projections, there is another silent but profound truth. The Afar region is home to nearly 2 million people. 
And these people are trying to build their lives on one of the most extreme geographic frontiers on Earth, on land that can shift at any moment. The Afar people are mostly made up of nomadic and semi-nomadic communities. They make their living through livestock. Animals like goats, camels, and donkeys are not just economic resources. They are fundamental to survival. But living on this harsh land means dealing with more than just drought and heat. It also requires enduring earthquakes, volcanic gases, and sudden shifts in the Earth's crust. In the Afar region, summer temperatures can exceed 122 degrees Fahrenheit. For much of the year, there are no freshwater sources available. The lakes are either salty or dry up seasonally. There are no rivers. Yet the people have developed an extraordinary method to overcome this challenge. Steam rising from volcanic cracks and underground vents is turned into a natural water source. The system is simple but ingeniously effective. A hole in the ground is surrounded by stones and branches and grass are placed on top. This surface allows the hot steam rising from underground to condense. As the steam condenses, water droplets collect in the depression in the soil. While the water isn't clean enough for drinking, it is sufficient for animals and some basic needs. There's also a simple yet effective way to check water quality. A piece of obsidian glass is held over the steam outlet. If a milky white residue forms on the stone, it indicates that the steam in that area contains a high concentration of harmful minerals. But volcanic activity doesn't just produce steam. As seen during the Dabahu eruption, gas emissions can also pose serious dangers. Gases like sulfur dioxide irritate the respiratory system and animals can be affected. In fact, aside from the hundreds of animals that fell into cracks during the 2005 event, the number of animals killed by toxic gases was also significant. And the geographical dangers don't end there. Afar is also a region marked by political and social instability. This part of Ethiopia has witnessed ethnic tensions, internal conflicts, and the presence of armed groups for many years. In some areas, carrying weapons is part of daily life. Although it is now possible to reach volcanic zones by vehicle, places that once required a six-hour walk, security concerns still make access to these regions difficult. Despite these hardships, the Afar people continue to live in the region. Their culture, language, and way of life have adapted completely to the local conditions. Their homes are made of lightweight structures that can be easily dismantled and moved because the ground beneath them is never stable. A settlement built today could end up on the edge of a massive crack tomorrow. But the most remarkable thing is the adaptability people have developed in the face of this constant change. Some communities are gradually migrating, others are starting to use newly emerging hot water sources for agriculture. In other words, while the continent is splitting apart, life is still finding a way to continue. But how long can this adaptation last? As the plates continue to move, what new challenges will the people here face? And when the sea finally reaches this land, what will life look like? The plate separation occurring today in East Africa is not the first of its kind in Earth's history. Around 200 million years ago, all of the world's continents were joined together. This supercontinent was known as Pangaea, but internal movements within the planet slowly began to break apart this massive landmass. The first split occurred between South America and Africa. That process created the vast body of water we now know as the Atlantic Ocean. In other words, these two continents, once united, gradually drifted apart, just like Africa is now separating from within. A similar process also happened more recently. The Arabian Plate began drifting away from Africa about 30 million years ago. This movement led to the formation of the Red Sea. The sea that now lies between Saudi Arabia and Africa was once land. But as the plates moved apart, the ground sank and seawater flooded into the region. The current rift zone in East Africa is seen as a southern extension of the Red Sea. According to scientists, in a few million years, the southern tip of the Red Sea will extend toward the Afar region and merge with the newly forming ocean basin. Another example can be found in Central Asia. Geological studies conducted in 2019 revealed that the area now known as Mongolia was once home to an ocean. Research showed that between 410 and 415 million years ago, a body of water called the Mongol Okhotsk Ocean existed here. Like other oceans, it formed as a result of plate movements and later disappeared when different continents collided and closed it off. This example shows that oceans don't just form, they also vanish over time. In short, the Earth is in constant motion. Plate tectonics is the way the planet breathes. Continents merge and separate, oceans open and close. 
This cycle has repeated many times. The breakup of Gondwana, the opening of the Atlantic, the rise of the Himalayas, and now Africa is carving a new path within itself. This path is not just a physical separation, it's part of the planet's ongoing effort to rebalance itself. It is not a catastrophe, it's a process of birth. A new continental edge, a new ocean floor, and perhaps one day, a new ecosystem are emerging. The Earth is reshaping its own body. And this entire process reminds us of one simple truth. Humanity is not the master of the Earth, but its guest. And during our time as guests, we witness both the retreat of ancient oceans and the birth of new continents.